to the adjust and then we have also then the beginning of the Paschal Tide uh, at this day. And the it's good to be here again in, in, in New Hampshire. And the epistle for this uh, Saturday, the Saturday after Easter Sunday, is taken from the book of Joel, chapter 2. Thus saith the Lord God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Moreover, upon my servants and handmaids in those days I will pour forth my spirit, and I will show wonders in heaven, and in earth blood, and fire, and vapor, and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord doth come. And it will sh shall sh come to pass, that every one that shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then the gospel. One second here. I see. This is the wrong day here. It is a beautiful pistol anyway. Let's see, Mark. Yes. But we'll, we'll go ahead and read the correct gospel. One. The gospel for. Today is taken from St. John chapter 20. That was Epistle for Saturday after Easter, after, after, after Pentecost, by the way. And then uh, one of the first epistles. And the gospel for the St. John chapter 20, the actual gospel for today. At that time, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene cometh early, when it was dark, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre. And she saw the stone taken away from the sepulchre. And she ran therefore and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus uh, loved, and saith to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other, that other disciple, and they came to the sepulchre, and they both ran together. And that other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And when he stooped down, he saw the linen cloths lying. But yet he, was, he went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and saw the linen cloths lying, and the napkin that had been about his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but apart, wrapped up into one place. Then that other disciple also went in, who came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed, for as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must arise again from the dead. Thus for the words of today's Holy Gospel. Then the epistle speaks about our Lord that was the cornerstone was rejected, but shall become the head of the corner. But in any case, the uh, from the epistle of Saint Peter, chapter two. Heavenly Father, the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today, a few uh, considerations, and I think it's better if you if have a hard time with that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. A few considerations. The um, 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 today is the sa Saturday of the uh, after Easter, and this is the day of the completion of the victory that really matters. Last night was the last day before the Septuagint when we read the last, the last Magnificat Antiphon. The very last one before we, we, we began the Septuagint. The Septuagint began 70 days ago. And the Father tell us Septuagint equals the day of the deviation. Because God created man perfect, He created man good, and then He decided to commit the original sin and walk away from God. And he walks away for 70 weeks of years. There are seven capital sins, just like there are seven virtues. And, there, and that there's, there's a hold of time. For 70 weeks of years, man walks away from God. It is the time of the deviation. But what's going to be the completion of this deviation? Eight days ago, seven days ago, our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, there was still sin in the world. And after his resurrection... There is still deviation. We are now 2,000 years 
after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, almost 2,000 years, a few years shy of 2,000 years, and, and almost 2,000 years ago, our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead, but we discover in this time after the resurrection that there is still deviation. Man still walks away from God. When we go back to that Holy Thursday night, and we can consider when our Lord Jesus Christ was in that Garden of Gethsemane, that he considered in three hours multiple things. But in the first hour, one of the things that caused him great pain and to sweat blood and to have great agony was those souls who would deny him between the time of the creation until his coming before the bride good came. And then in the second hour, he considered those that, died, that would still deny him while he was on the earth when the bridegroom was present. And in the third hour, even after knowing about his victory, even after knowing about the great love that Christ shed and caused him to shed every drop of his blood upon the cross, even out of the foundation of holy mother of the church, and giving us the seven easy ways to heaven, which are the seven beautiful virtues of faith, hope, and charity, prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude, and the seven sacraments, and the seven, seven corporal and spiritual works of mercy, such easy ways to heaven, nothing very difficult at all. And yet, man will still walk away from him and not love him. And there was a great agony. When our Lord Jesus Christ was 40 days after, after his resurrection, he said to his apostles before he went up into heaven on Ascension Thursday, he said, All power is given to me on heaven and earth. And these are the last words he will say to his apostles. All power is given to me. I want you to remember that. Because during the course of the next 2,000 years, when you will see at the end of those 2,000 years, you will see the great fulfillment of the prophecy that I spoke to Caiaphas, that most wicked man, when he stood in front of me and he thought he was the great high priest. But what did, he, what did I tell him? You, Caiaphas, shall see the Son of Man coming in power and majesty. And not only you, but all men on earth, all enemies as well as friends, shall see the Son of Man coming in great power and majesty as lightning comes from the east unto the west to judge the entire earth on that day of awful judgment. That day is coming. That's the day of judgment. But what about between the day of judgment and the day of the resurrection? You know that when a young man, a young strong man, comes to the house of someone who's weak, he comes to the house of someone who's feeble, and there are no police around, and he murders that person, he murders innocent victim, he robs the person, and murders, and goes away. The one he killed is dead. The things he took are stolen, and he escapes. But what happens? There will be a day of judgment. There will be a day of judgment when he shall be captured by the police, when he shall be put on trial, and when he shall be executed for his crime. This happens to all those who commit sins. And we all know that every wicked man is going to be judged for his wickedness. The Bilderbergers shall not get away with their wickedness right now. Their great wickedness, but which they're putting terror into souls, worrying about this stupid virus. You get a better chance of tripping in your bathtub and breaking your nose against the bathtub and dying that way than dying from this virus. Absolutely foolishness. Absolute insanity. But they want you to worry about your physical health. When you should know that no matter how healthy you are, guess what's going to happen? You're going to die. And when you die, you will meet the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter about your physical health. What matters is in what state is your soul? In what state is our soul? In what state is my soul? When I go into the judgment of the of our Lord Jesus Christ, He is going to judge. It is true that God is going to come to judge. But what did Christ say? I have now been 33 years upon this earth. I spent the last three years performing great miracles, raising people from the dead. They tried to kill me at least six times, and I escaped very easily from their hands. 
And when I decided to go and die, I went and died, exactly as I said I was going to die. And I rose from the dead on the third day, exactly when I said it would rise from the dead. And I appeared to all those that love me, and I appeared to all those that, that have the faith in their hearts, and I proved to them that I am truly God, and I will come again. And the angels are going to tell you in five minutes after I go up into the clouds. I'm going to go up in the clouds, and the men are going to, the angels, the disciples are going to be looking up. What's going to happen? Angels are going to come down and say, Ye men of Galilee, why are you looking up? Don't you not know he's going to come again? He will come again to judge. And don't worry, you won't miss out. If you're blind, you're going to see. If you're deaf, you're going to hear. And if you're dead, you don't get out of it either. You will rise from the dead. If you're in heaven, you're going to be pulled down to earth. And if you're in hell, you're going to be pulled up to earth. And if you're purgatory, you're going to be dragged down to earth. Don't worry. No one's missing out. No need to watch. I wonder if this house is going to be blown up. Well, if a nuclear bomb hits it and explodes, don't wonder anymore. <laughs> it's there. It explodes. And on the day of judgment, the fire will go around the entire earth. On the day of judgment, the good and the bad and the indifferent, the dead and the alive, shall all come. Ye men of Galilee, why are you looking up at that? Don't hurt your neck. Don't do it. It's like the wise uh, motto on the side of the Apache attack helicopter in the American Army. As they run around to kill people, it says, don't run. You'll just die tired. We're going to kill everybody. We're going to shoot everybody. If you don't run, we'll shoot you there. If you run, you'll just die tired. But you won't escape. The judgment of God is more certain than an Apache helicopter, helicopter, attack helicopter. The judgment of God shall not be escaped. And so there's a foolishness that comes from looking to the judgment. And the angel comes down and says, Why are you looking up, waiting for the judgment? Christ will return, just like he said. Between now and then, get busy. Between now and then, go out and preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. What are you to do between now and then? The deviation still continues. We are right now, in the year 2020, still in the actual season of Septuagesima. It shall not be actually completed until the day of judgment on the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, when that final liturgical year the season of Easter and the season of Pentecost will meet together and they will have the same ending. They will have the same ending by which the angel is going to come and blow the trumpet and there's going to be a judgment. What do we do between now and then? It's a very sacred thing that is done right now. The Holy Church brings back one word. This word is introduced to us on this day of Holy Saturday, and, and the Saturday after Easter, in a very sacred and special way, and that is, Alleluia. It says in the Missal today, from now on, until the end of the Paschal time, we no longer say the gradual, which we have noticed in the last days of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, after Easter, we're still saying the gradual. The gradual and the tract, these penitential words, they shall be dropped and now we say only Alleluia after the epistle. We receive the catechism of the epistle, and now we say Alleluia. And today is the first day that we officially say the Alleluia, and then when the missile explains, we'll continue this Alleluia until the very ending of the Paschal Tide, which shall be on the Saturday before Trinity Sunday. And between now and that Saturday, there shall be the Paschal Tide. And this continues the Easter season. So to remember that all those who need to, who have not yet made their confession or their for Holy Communion during the Easter tide, the Easter tide began on the first Sunday of actually Septuagint Jesus Sunday, and it continues all the way until Trinity Sunday. So we're about halfway through right now. We're not finished. We got another five weeks before it is all said and done. We're about halfway through this Septuagint on one side and Septuagint on the other. So there will be a, there 70 days. We are still in the time of the deviation. But what is the consideration now on this Saturday? We must consider this. What do we do? Ye men of Galilee, what do you do? 
you go about doing good. You go about praising God. You go about bringing his infinite goodness to the very ends of the earth. That is that which we are supposed to do. For there was a cornerstone, as we read about in the epistle, the one correct epistle, I didn't read the correct epistle today. When you read about in the epistle, there was a cornerstone that was rejected. And that cornerstone has become the head of the corner. The stone that was rejected. The builders rejected the stone because it was not good enough for any part of the building. But the stone the builders rejected because it wasn't good enough that stone was made the head of the corner. That stone was made the stone that says that we, that is going to unite the Jew and Gentile. The stone is going to hold up the entire structure of, the, of, of, of our Holy Mother, the Church. The stone that is union between Jew and Gentile, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. That stone was rejected, and there will be many stones rejected down all the ages. But what's going to happen? These, this stone is going to praise God. What is going to be his final word to his father? Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And what are we priests supposed to do? The world, is, they're still deviating from God. They're still walking away from God. They declared during this coronavirus, for instance, this non-crisis, the coronavirus, that this crisis is very, very dangerous because you're not going to be safe. And in order to be safe, you cannot gather together in the presence of God. That's very unsafe. Ecclesia means the church, and the church means that uh, we gather together in an assembly in the presence of God to adore Him, and that we cannot do this. It's not safe. How did they bring an end to pilgrimage to plagues in the past? The bishops of the church, the pope of the church, brought, uh, brought men on pilgrimages. They gathered together and they worshiped God. They gathered together and they begged forgiveness for their sins. What did the wise, uh, 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 wise king of Nineveh, who was not a Catholic, who was not a Jew, who did not believe in the true religion, but when he heard Jonas the priest walk through his city and say, you have offended God, this massive city of over 300,000 people, this city which takes three days to walk through, walking all day and all night, and Jonas walked through that city over three days and three nights. How many days would Christ lay in the tomb? Jonas walked through the city and he said, do penance because you have offended God and God is going to destroy this city. And the king of Nineveh, what did he do? He didn't say, stay in quarantine. He didn't say, be safe. He went out of the streets and he put on sackcloth and ashes. He put ashes upon his own head. And he begged forgiveness for his sins, and he commanded that there be a fast of 40 days for all the people in the city of Nineveh, lest God punish them, and he'll help God to change his mind and to repent. And the king of Nineveh saved his city. He saved his city because he wept for his sins, and he turned to God. What about our king? Our king, King Trump, is he turning to God? No, he is not. He is not. Are the other enemy are the others turning to God? No, they are not. They are seeing how great that they are. They're going to find another way than the way of Christ to get through a crisis. And they have not turned to God. This will not get us through a crisis. It won't do it at all. So what are we to do during this time of the continued deviation? Speak to souls about Christ. Speak to souls about his victory and praise him. Let God be praised. The Alleluia is brought back on this day. Let God be praised. And the stone that was the head of the corner, it is now it, it was rejected, it has become the head of the corner. The stone that was rejected has now become the head of the corner. And so we have to remember in this great battle in which we are, we must know, love, and serve God. Hold the holy truth. Carry the faith. Carry the gospel. Who wants Christ? Who wants the gospel? And what does it say about this aquam that we see? Vidi aquam. We switch to the vidi aquam. I saw water going out from the right side of the temple. We sing this every Sunday now during this season. And those to whom the water came, they were saved. And we're reminded also in the Mass today that, that this is, that the, with those who um, those who have not obtained mercy, they shall now obtain mercy. 
But here also we have the example of St. John. What did John do? St. John went to the tomb, and he ran fast, but he did not enter because he was not the Pope. And then also, after St. Peter entered, then John, St. John went in, and he saw the tomb, and he saw the shroud of Turin, and he saw the other napkin laid at the head of the head, cover the head of our Lord, laid at the other side. And he saw that it was rolled back, and he saw the soldiers were gone. And he believed. And he believed. What must happen right now? He believed, and he was the innocent one. There was another one at a time like that, just before the victory of Christ, and she was a guilty one, and her name was Rahab. Remember when Rahab allowed those spies into her house? She was a prostitute. She lived next to the wall of Jericho. And what did she do at that moment? She says, I saw the army of Jews walking around this city, and I see that they are motley crew. They don't have good weapons and so on. But I can see that they are blessed of the true God. And I can see that God is with them. And I can see that our impregnable walls will be destroyed by your God. When did she see this? Before the battle, before the victory, when did she make the deal? When did she say, I want to make a deal with you? I will save you three spies. When did she make that deal? She made the deal at the time that it appeared as though there was no hope for the Jews. Just like in our time, there's no hope for the victory of Mary. But she's already won. There is, right now, we are in the time where the friends of God are walking around the wall of the city of Jericho and modern pride. And they don't have weapons. They don't have GPS systems. They don't have modern communications the way the world does today. They don't have all the things that we're supposed to have. But what's going to happen? These ones, those of us in the army of God, those of us faithful to the Blessed Virgin Mary, we shall have the victory over all these modern fools. They shall be defeated. Their walls of their 5G networks, which are vibrating your bodies to death, these walls are going to fall down. And the walls of the modern army is going to fall down. And the walls of the modern economy is going to fall down. And it's going to be replaced by the kingdom of Christ and the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now is the time to start bartering deals. And a prostitute knew that. Mm -hmm. The soldiers didn't know. We're in a time when you have the wisdom of Rahab. St. John, the innocent apostle, who was not filled with impurity, he knew. No one else knew. No one else believed except the Blessed Virgin Mary. But he knew and he believed. And so likewise, Rahab knew and she believed. Remember this about the Day of Judgment. How many people are going to have true faith on the Day of Judgment? Let's say there are 7,647,903 people on the earth on that day. On that day, there will be 7,643,903 people who have the faith. There won't be one exception. Every single man, woman, and child is going to know that is God coming from the east. Some skeptics have said to us, well, the earth is round, and the east is this way, and the west is that way, so Christ coming from Jerusalem. Well, if you're on the other side of Jerusalem, he's going to be in the west. He is coming from the east, and he's going to arrive at the west. And if you look at a circle, if you go around the east to the west, guess what? You can keep on going. Guess how long you keep going? For a long time. <laughs> and you go all the way around. And you're going to see him coming from the east. That's where the sun rises. And you're all going to be gathered in the west. So that if you happen to live one foot west of the valley of, of, the, of, valley of Josephat, you're not going to go west there or east there. You're going to be dragged to the west. You've got a long journey. 24,000 miles. And you're going to come back around to the Valley of Josephat. From east unto west. That's the way it's going to be. And everybody is going to believe. That's not the day to believe. 
now is the day to believe. They're threatening us. They're not even threatening us right now. They're threatening to threaten us. Then one day they're going to probably threaten us. Mm. It's very threatening. Mm. Now they're threatening to threaten us because one day they might threaten us. They're not arresting anybody right now. They're not bringing the machine guns to our house right now. But who knows? They might bring something that might be something that could be really bad. And we are scared to death. This is the time to make the deal with the angels. This is the time. This is the time. In the Battle of Arnhem, the Germans came across the bridge, the English were surrounded, and they said, we want you to surrender. And the response was, we're sorry, but we, we don't have the facilities to take all you prisoners right now. <laughs> we don't have the facilities to take all the Germans prisoners because we're surrounded right now, so we can't take all of you prisoners right now. You're going to have to wait till we can capture you later. <laughs> So the guy scratched his head and went back. I guess they didn't surrender. They asked us to surrender. That's what we're supposed to do right now. We got you surrounded. You know, I guess I can't take your surrender right now. It's the Bilderbergers that need to surrender. It's the one Worlders that need to surrender. It's the Communists that need to surrender. Because their days are up. Bill Gates needs to surrender. We'll give him some of his have the vaccines. <laughs> you can take 4,000 of your vaccines. <laughs> See how many colors your skin can turn. <laughs> the fact is that this is the time for them to surrender. <laughs> Not the time for us to surrender. Now is the time to make a deal with Christ. Rahab did not make a deal with the army of the uh, Jericho people. The king of Jericho. She made a deal with three spies. And what did the three spies say to her? They said, save us. Because they're coming to kill us. Hide us. Hide us. And she said, all right. But there is a deal involved. I will hide you. I will let you down over the walls. I will send you back to your, your leader, Joshua. And I will wait for your God to come. But you must promise that anyone in my house, they shall not be harmed. Now is the time for us to make a promise, not with the bad guys, but with the angels. Lord, when you come down to smash the Bilderbergers, when you come down to smash the one world government, because it's not yet the time of the Antichrist, when you come down to smash these enemies of God, I am sorry that I have been so much in confidence in them and so much afraid of them. I make a deal with you. I'll hide the priest. I will stay with Christ. I will know, love, and serve him. I won't turn away because I know that the victory of Mary is very, very near and I want to be ready for that victory. We must have confidence in the victory of the Holy Mother. And if we don't have confidence, guess what? She still wins. And if we don't believe, guess what? That she still wins. My father Giselle used to say, it's a very good place to be in her arms. Because if you're not in your arms, you might be under her feet. And you don't want to be there. We don't want to be there. If you're in the arms of Mary, you're in a very safe place. There's only one dangerous thing in this world, and that's her heel. And you're very safe if you're in her arms. This is the time to be in the arms of the Holy Mother. This is a time to have confidence in the victory of Christ. This is a time to beg forgiveness for our foolishness, our wickedness, and our sins. And to have confidence that the day of victory is nigh. So the apostles, the angel came down and said, Why are you looking up to heaven? Go out and preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Going therefore, teach ye all nations. Or as St. Mark would say, preach the gospel to every single creature. That is, to the fishes, St. Anthony, to the birds, St. Francis, to the rocks, to every single creature, preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Preach it. And let the gospel be known. Because it is the only answer to every trouble in our world today. And one of the great mockeries that cries to heaven right now is so many souls have decided with our government, including the government of our wicked church, God is not essential. 
and we don't need to be at church. We have to keep a safe distance. Make sure you keep six feet. Try that for your next heart surgery. Now it's illegal to get haircuts, but I think you can do it if you get those little long weed cutters that they use for the branches. You get a big long stick. You put a little, a little small, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, uh, the chainsaw at the end, and line up for haircuts. <laughs> Hope they don't miss. It's absolute insanity. We have to be all. They want you to be six feet away. They want you to be twenty-one feet away. They want you to be a thousand feet away. We are not meant to be away from each other, and we are not meant to be away from God. This is absolute insanity. This is a time to be close to God. This is a time to go to God. This is not a time to go away from Him. And who does not go to Him may be in very, very big trouble. Oh, we're just waiting for better times. Will there be better times for a dying man? Now is the time. Now is the time. How many times have we anointed souls? I'm going to anoint you. You're dying right now. Look, Father, I'm not feeling good. You're not going to feel better. You're dying. Now is the time to make your peace with God. Come back when I feel better. Just a case this very day. Today. A lady last night. One of our parishioners said to her as a nurse, you're not feeling well. Want me to get the priest? Don't bother me. I don't want a priest. No, not today. It was yesterday, but it doesn't matter. Very recently. I don't want a priest. So she went into the house the next morning. The door was open and she was dead. The last words were, I don't want a priest. How many souls are saying such words today? How many souls are dying without Christ? Well, all right, you don't want a priest? You shall not have one. She didn't know. She thought she was going to live longer. Another man that died at the beginning of this crisis, I mentioned already multiple times, he went to Panama. He went to, he went to Ecuador. While I was celebrating Mass in his house where he should have been, he was not there. He died. Because he was going to be ready. They have decided they don't need God. And the whole world has decided we don't need God. This is not the time to make that decision. It's not safe to be with God. The wrath of God is about to come down. The justice of God is about to be given. And on the day of judgment, everybody believes. But they shall not be benefited. Now is the time to believe. Now is the time to have confidence. Now is the time to join the army of Christ. Now is the time to be a follower of Christ. Not tomorrow when the Blessed Virgin Mary has her great victory and wipes out the mass of humanity. We must have confidence now. We must spread the faith now. We must carry the gospel now. This is the time to be a friend of God. And we must ask that grace to be his friend and not fall down in weakness, as so many have done, and as we are, are very easily capable of doing ourselves. Only the Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, can protect us, and our guardian angel, and our saints, and help us, our patron saints. Let's call on them, and ask them to help us to persevere in faith, and hope, and charity through these times. Those of you all, in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen.